Welcome back to another Pearson Workholding Q&A, episode three of four with the shop tour, continuing with Kelvin Verrett of Urban Survival Gear. Now in this episode, we talk about machining. We take a deep dive of how we set up our work cells, how we process things through the company machining centers for maximum efficiency. Let's get started. Okay, so this is like our machining alley. I said we work in U-shaped cells and linear cells. So it, all the machines are set up linear, but they're set up whenever we work at them, there's a U-shape. So he just finished uh, the 914s that used to be there on a forklift. So he puts it in and it comes out. So he's moving, he's basically doing the pivoting thing, picking up, putting it in, Moving over here, this is a finished step. Yeah. Okay. Step. Yeah. More efficiency like that. If he were working on this machine, he would put this right here so that he's not having to walk around. It's yeah. all the little things. You I know, know dude. It's the little, it's the little things. things. Five seconds at a time. Yeah. Five seconds, five seconds, five seconds. Exactly, yeah. Uh, if you've been following our robot video, our yes, robot's I have. here. I so, love um, and it, that's it's, it. It's doing its thing. I think they're programming it right now, so I'll, I'll leave them alone. So these two machines almost run autonomously. We have a part picker. It's not running right now, but it's a pneumatic thing that feeds. We'll I've seen that. I've seen that. Okay, seen that. so, so seen these that. two can run by themselves. Actually, these three. So this lathe here, dual spindle, uh, live tooling, Y-axis, it pretty much spits out. Well, it does spit out finished parts. It puts them on this conveyor. Um, and these are some bolts that we're making. We changed the design of the mini pallet system. So these bolts can be direct bolted to the Saunders machine works fixture plate. Yeah. So it aligns and everything. So that's a nice little improvement. So we're gearing up to change that. I am, act that. well, another thing. <clears throat> I am actively in the market for a big boy lathe. Okay. And I've got several probes uh -huh. and I've been driving around looking at different machines. Yeah. I saw this one pop up. Yeah. You just explained everything that I want in mind. Uh -huh. Thumbs up. Yeah, I would buy if I, I would buy this again. Actually, I wouldn't. I would buy the next size up um, just because we can put bigger oh, okay. parts through it. Um, but this is a killer machine. It's as close as you can get to printing money and not. That's what I, so. basically I want to get to the point to where, because, you know, I have two, two sides of a pin, right? Uh -huh. You got machine this side and machine this side. It's basically two ops. Yeah. The idea I had was to put it in one side, do your thing, yeah. put it in the other side, do your thing. And then a robot. Uh -huh grabs it, pulls it out, puts it in the bin. Yeah. Then it just pulls stock through and just does the whole thing yeah. over again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, this pulls stock, uh, subspindle, it does the first op, pulls it, parts it off. Then it comes down the, the backside and then broaches it. So even even heads are broached, so. Can, can, okay, yeah. I know I know you, I know you're in your spiel. Can I look inside? Can I, can yeah, I look inside go for a little it. bit? Okay, cool, thanks. Oh, man. Okay, wait a Yeah. Can you do soft call, can you sue? Uh, yeah, uh-huh, yep. Soft calls, everything. So it, it came with two um, chucks, you know, mm -hmm. where you can do soft jaws. Right. We took both of them off and immediately put them in boxes and we bought the Royal system. And then that's a, uh, a dead length 5C call it. I like this, oh yeah, because it has a stop in the back. I, yeah. I got that. I like, but typically, you know, when you're, when you're grabbing stock, mm -hmm. the way we're doing it now, mm -hmm. soft, basically soft, uh, soft, soft jaws, mm -hmm. But I, I'm like the Royal system. I've seen that. That's the one with the uh, gun, right? Yeah, it's got a gun. That's how you load those collets in. Okay. Great. Okay. Uh, like super, super accurate, quick change. Um, and then we standardize our, our mm -hmm. uh, diameters. So we okay. only buy in like half inch increments. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So yeah. it's, it's, it's cheaper to just turn off the excess material in like a few seconds, you know, then go, oh, we need that. 3364 this, yep. this is crazy and you know having it custom made and it takes yeah. months to get back to exactly you and, yeah and you gotta buy a lot of it yeah uh-huh yeah so and it then we don't mine. stop there so this is our yeah. our rolling so uh, we put everything on wheels so all the carts here um my guy if he wants he can roll this over to the saw he'll load up these tubes we call it the missile launcher load them up <laughs> roll it back here and now we just pull tube from the tube and load it in and so everything just we're not we're not burning a cart to put, you know, bars on on a cart. It's no, got its I, own little thing. So. I love it. I love it. Yeah. 
um, inspection at this end because grinding is the closest tolerance. We hold okay. everything to, to plus or minus, typically plus or minus one tenth. Right. So we have a two tenth window on right. accuracy. Um, and then our, our standard two axis lathe, uh, it does the bigger things. Like we make the adapter for the roto vise that needs to be done in two operations and handled each time. How do you handle maintenance for the machines? Maintenance? Oh, we maintain often. So the number one thing we do for main maintenance is we clean. Um, cleaning like gets you into places that you normally don't go. So all these machines, I mean, they're spotless. We treat them like I, I'm know, looking at that sports now. cars. Even though that's running, I'm like, there's nothing yeah. in on that. Yeah, and even the tops, you know, things like that. We, yeah. You could almost eat off the tops. Because there's been times where, I remember on my mini mill, I was cleaning off the, I went, wait a minute, the factory forgot two bolts on one side. I would have never found that if I weren't up there, you know, reaching around and like cleaning, like with the, <laughs> like a toothbrush or something, you know, you yeah. just don't, don't do that. Yeah. So number one thing, maintenance, get in the machines. Um, back there, right there, that is a sump sucker vacuum. It will empty oh. the sump in one minute, a 55 gallon sump, and we can clean it out. We do that whenever we run cast iron. Cast iron will kill machines, it's nasty stuff. It filters it and we pump it back in. So we'll get all the sludge, wipe that out, pump it back in. I and have never seen that. So, I mean, that is a huge addition can, to the can shop. You like go over, can yeah. We so we I will never seen wheel this. this over to the machine. Yeah. Um, and then depending on what you want to do, if you want to clean it out, you'd move this to the suction. And this is just a blower. So it creates negative pressure yep. in here and then draws it in. There's a filter and then it will slowly fill this. Then when we're done wiping it out, we switch this over. No, we do, yeah, we uh, switch this over. Then it puts positive pressure. And then on the back side here, where is it? Where are we at? Yeah, okay, looking right at it. It's got like a gas nozzle and you just pump it right back in. So you can- That's pull, a game changer. You can, you can pull the coolant out in one minute and then put it back in in a minute. So two minutes, if you wanted to just do a quick filter, just suck it out, switch it, pump it back and in. And you do that once a month, once a week? Uh, we do it every couple of weeks typically, but at the end of every day when running cast iron. Because all your machines are operating, they all look brand new. Uh huh. The thing that got me was, how do you, because, okay, if you're working on planes, right? Uh -huh. Every month you take the whole plane apart almost. Okay. Check everything, yeah. and you put it all back together right. again. And then every six months, you send it off to another place to where they literally take off every single bolt. Yeah. And they inspect every single part. Uh -huh. And they replace the parts that don't work, then they put it all back together again. It right. takes like three months. Yeah, okay. That's the that's how they maintain it. Okay. And I came here and I'm like, okay, how's he maintain? And sure enough, he said, oh, we do this every yeah. week. Right. We wipe them down all the time. Yeah. That way nothing breaks unexpectedly yeah. and stays broke. Yeah, it's preventative maintenance. Yeah. Because well, you yeah. don't want to have a machine down and go, oh man, now we got to order parts, now we got to wait, lean waste, all that stuff. Call service tech. Yeah, wait, wait on them, lean waste, waiting again. So everything's preventative. That gets us into the nooks and crannies where we find problems to go, hey, this seal's looking a little shady. Let's just swap that out now. How long, with all your machines, uh -huh. how long does it take to clean every day? I mean, um, do you like block out like, like for an hour out yeah. of every eight hour shift for the clean? We're, we're pretty casual about that. So one thing you'll notice going back to the production boards, a guy will put a dot next to the machine title. Yeah. So it just kind of cycles. And we have what, uh, like eight, nine machines that we maintain here. So once done, he'll just move it down. And then when there's really like a lull in production, he'll just go over and go, okay, it's time for the VF2C to get clean. And then he'll just casually go about it. So we're not like set on like, hey, you got to do this. Um, but we do have build it as part of our process. We do have that like um, not a hardcore schedule, but it, it's it should be in the process. Well, you follow it because everything's clean. So I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, you follow yeah. it. So, yeah. So, All right, sir, sorry about that. No, no, no. That's, Carry a, on, that's a good question. Grinding, surface grinding the rails that go into the top of our pallet systems, uh, loading them up. Nothing really special there. Oh, actually, I mean, actually, it is because I'm looking at your tooling cart. Uh huh. Everything that you need basically to maintain, adjust, and deal with that machine is on that cart. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's a and good point. And it's set out to a point to where there's no guesswork. I mean, okay, 
normally what I see, mm -hmm. there's a set of Allen wrenches. Yep. And they're all over the place. Yeah. But really for that machine, yeah. to what he needs to deal with, you need two. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, this is something that might stand out, grinder training playlist. So everyone's got a smartphone these days. Yeah. It's kind of a complicated machine. If I haven't run this, I haven't run this in a solid like six months, but if I need to come in here oh, and run it. Oh man, okay, got it. I'll scan that and then just go through, oh yeah, um, setting your work offset. And I'll watch just a two or three minute video. And I'll be like, okay, that refreshes me. I tried it, but uh -huh. all my guys like, it's too long of a video. Yeah. You subjected, okay, offset this video. Mm -hmm. You sub, okay, yeah. that makes sense. Dividing it up. So that's why it says playlist, not master video. Bingo, playlist, so, okay. Little gotcha. short things. Gotcha. Oh, going back to the uh, Allen wrenches and stuff, everything we need to grind right here. Yep. So that, this is where our diamond dress went, inspection. That I got. Pulling wheels, yeah, that that's I got. awesome, yeah. Uh, same thing, our digital hype gauge, hype gauge training playlist. So kind of a complicated device to use. Scan that, refresh yourself. So got our air bearing gauge, air gauge training video right there, you know. So that's how you set oh, it up. definitely doing that. Yeah, so that's easy. Um, yeah, and simple. Dymo, you just copy and paste the URL in YouTube, yeah. paste it, it creates the, the, that uh, QR code. So. And no one's freaking out right now. No, no, no. No, I mean... I, I believe it or not, I've toured a lot. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna see how everyone else is doing business. Uh -huh. Then I'm gonna decide how I want to do business. Okay, yeah. So I've been to a few shops, uh -huh. and you see a lot of things. People are running around, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Yeah. Everyone seems pretty dang chill there's around no, here. Oh, it's yeah. There's no freak out around here. Like honestly, honestly. The system. Animal yeah. Bible. Probably get stressed. I think I'm up to twice this year. Like, oh my gosh, I'm so stressed out right now. Like that's happened twice, you know? Because I'm just part of the process. <laughs> Seriously, yeah, you're you know? not the process. Last, last year I had a bad year. It happened four times. I had four like. That's uh, a lot. Yeah, that's, 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 yeah. That's like a month, dude. <laughs> that's like a month. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's and, like a month. I'm trying to, a year. Uh, and, and we uh, moved last year, so we moved from there to here, and then the next morning I moved my house. So, but you know, every the the, the, pro, the process was all dialed in. I knew that's way more than one man could take on. So, that wasn't like a, a freak out or anything, you know. So, but yeah, four four. Uh, that was not a good year. So. I want to break my record. I'm at okay. two right now, so. <laughs> um, okay. Little things. Okay, so we have our rolling cart. Uh, oh. UPS. So he... Hey, guys. Hope you dug this episode. If you did, subscribe and hit that notification bell because part four, we continue talking about machining, cleaning, all the little nitty-gritty stuff as we continue to take a deep dive into our work cells. So until next time, go innovate your production.